We had so many great stories for Legends and Lore, which is coming up January 25th at Kaufman Auditorium, that we had to cut a bunch of them out. But there is one that I would like to share with you. It's kind of a sneak peek of what you're going to see if you join us at Kaufman coming up on the 25th. So here's the story, and it brings us back to Nagani of 1885. Now, Nagani, of course, like all mining towns, was a very rough and tumble place. And they had a lot of places on the outskirts of town that were... Uh, CD, shall we say. Uh, there's one in particular called the Carp, and this is the story of a guy who went to the Carp a lot. His name was Patrick Bennett. He was uh, a criminal, a ne'er-do-well, a misfit. He spent a lot of his time at this house of ill repute. And the Nagani Sheriff, because they didn't have actual city police back then, but each town had a sheriff. The Nagani Sheriff knew all about the Carp, so every once in a while he would send a deputy out there to make sure that the ne'er-do-wells like Patrick Bennett weren't near dwelling. Well, one day, uh, Patrick Bennon was coming out of the carp when a Nagani sheriff's deputy named Cox stopped him. Bennon was drunk. He was going, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be here. And we all know that he actually meant to be there. I didn't mean to be there. Um, he gave, Bennon gave the deputy his pistol just to prove that he was not dangerous or anything. So the deputy, whose name was Knox, sent him, gave him his pistol, sent him on his way, whereupon Bennon then shot and killed the deputy and then went back into the carp to hide. Needless to say, this did not go over very well with the citizens of Nagani. In fact, 200 of them went down to the carp to protest by the time the protest was done, the cart burned down and the Nagani sheriff said it was spontaneous combustion and they didn't need to investigate it at all, amazingly. Patrick Bennon, during the melee, had escaped the carp and was on the run. Now, the Nagani City Council put up a reward of $300 for anyone who could find Bennon and the Market Mining Journal, in their usual journalistic objectivity of the 1880s, said that Benin would probably be best served as a decoration hanging from a light pole or a tree branch. For two months, Patrick Benin was on the run. Patrick Benin was living off the land. He was seen here, he was seen there, but he was never found. One day, word was received that he had hopped a Chicago and Northwestern freight train and made his way down to Brampton where he was hiding in, you guessed it, another house of ill repute. He really liked those places, really, he did. Uh, the Delta County Sheriff got a hold of the Nagani Sheriff and a bunch of forces converged upon the brothel in Brampton whereupon Patrick Bennon was arrested. He was then shipped back to Marquette on a special train where three days later he was found guilty of killing Knox, the Nagani Sheriff's deputy, and then he spent the rest of his life in the Jackson prison. Now that's the end of Patrick Bennett's story, but there was one other interesting thing that I found while looking through these 1885 newspapers. And by the way, I highly recommend looking through newspapers from the 1880s uh, because the Mining Journal, like I said, had been writing all about Patrick Ben and how much of a horrid human being he was and you know how he should be drawn, quartered, and whatever else they did back in the 1880s. Well, one day, apparently when they had nothing to write about, the Mining Journal reporter put together an article talking about how people in Nagani were the worst in the world. They were thugs, they were reprobates, and they should be taught their lesson. Needless to say, the people of Nagani, especially the business owners of Nagani who paid to advertise in the Mining Journal, did not like that. Because the very next day, a story appeared in which the reporter who called Nagani residents thugs and reprobates basically said, never mind, I'm sorry. Those are the kind of stories that you'll be hearing coming up Thursday, January 25th at Legends and Lore at Kaufman Auditorium. We hope to see you there.